Hi, I was going to whack this as a quick video on my second channel, like I just uploaded uh, two videos on EV uh, Blog 2 with two little bugs I found in the new Roden Schwartz RTB 2004 oscilloscope, like five minutes after a couple of minutes after I started uh, using it. And I found another issue here. I was about to start like a first impressions review and I just uh, discovered this and I thought it was worth uh, showing you this and sort of uh, comparing it against different scopes. We're talking about microphonics, uh, in particular uh, microphonics in multi-layer ceramic capacitors. Now I've mentioned this on uh, videos before on uh, multi on ceramic capacitors, capacitors and things like that. I've even shown you that how that uh, the humble oscilloscope probe can also be microphonic if you uh, tap it on the uh, bench because well this end in here is going to have uh, multi-layer ceramic capacitors in it. So when you tap it, they can actually be microphonic, generate a voltage inside the capacitor, and it can cause a uh, problem in all sorts of, not just oscilloscope probes, um, but all sorts of products, all sorts of uh, systems. Real trap for young players, something to watch out for. And you'll notice that this will change a bit depending on the surface I've got. Obviously, if I tap it on the bench here, that's a hard surface, so that's generating a lot of uh, G's into the actual probe itself. Now, if I put it onto the uh, anti-static mat over here, which is spongier, it's a similar kind of response. It's uh, slightly, it's the same frequency response, but uh, the response is a little bit dampened. Now, one of the keys to this is the orientation, the physical rotation, orientation of the probe when it actually strikes the surface like this. That's the position that generates the most amount. Now if I just rotate it so that the um, switch is on the top there, so I've rotated it 90 degrees, it still does it, but we get a different response and it is dampened. So I actually discovered this on this RTB2004 uh, and I guess it's not surprising that it's possible, but I was a bit shocked at the extent of it inside this thing. Um, now what I've got uh, set up, I've got all my channels set to two millivolts uh, per division here. I've got it set to uh, two milliseconds per division. I've just chosen these as a reasonable example of uh, what we're going to see here. Uh, the triggering mode I've set to normal, it's just edge trigger, triggered off channel one, uh, rising slope, uh, DC coupling, no high frequency reject or anything like that. So a very typical uh, low level uh, triggering uh, configuration with a mid-range uh, time base. Now take a look at this, okay, I'm going to whack it in single mode and wow, look at that, microphonic, I'm just using my little plastic thing here, that was not a particularly hard tap either, that was a just a, a pretty, oh that one didn't do it, there's a, there's a level there's a level there that it uh, actually, oh, that's, well, well, actually, that's because of my, my trigger levels actually there. Sorry, so if we set the trigger level just above the noise there. Oh, jeez, look. It's just the tiniest little knock. Oh, that was so gentle, a knock. That was, oh, I barely even tapped it. And there we go, it's triggering. Channel 1 seems to be worse than the others. Channel 1 and Channel 4 seem to be like the worst culprits. Channel 2 seems to be pretty good. Um, now, I can experiment with this. I haven't actually done this yet, but oh, tap the, tap the probe front end like that on Channel 1. Just gentle tap on Channel 2. Look at Channel 2. It's coupled straight through the BNC. The vibration from tapping this coupled straight through the BNC onto the PCB onto the front end multi-layer ceramic capacitors. If you've no doubt seen my teardowns of analog front ends of oscilloscopes, they're filled with multi-layer ceramic capacitors. And if you get, you know, if you're not careful, uh, you can get ones that are, you know, much more mi microphonic than uh, others. You've got to be careful. In particular, the high value ones, the real multi-layer 10 microfarad, 10 volt ones or something like that, that have a horrible dielectric there. They can be really horribly microphonic with all those, you know, hundreds of layers or dozens or however many layers they have inside there. Um, so they're uh, piezoelectric. It's the piezoelectric effect. Anyway, I won't go into details, but that would, is almost certainly the, what's at fault here. But you can see this is horribly, to me, that is horribly microphonic. I originally found this because I was actually... Yeah, I was. I think I was tapping like the and touching the annotation button. I noticed that the trigger uh, lead came up every time I touched 
the it, it's not going to do it now. I'd probably have to set up the configurations. But that's how I uh, discovered the the problem here. Sorry, I've got to go back. The annoying thing about the scope, by the way, you put in auto mode, you hit single, it doesn't take it out of auto mode. Like I want it to go when I press that single button. I want it to just go into normal mode and be ready to trigger. I I don't like the way that operates. It's not uh, it's not a bug. It's just an undesirable feature in my. Uh, uh, opinion. Anyway, so let's actually uh, compare that to uh, many other oscilloscopes I have in the lab and see if this is a common problem in oscilloscopes. My microphonics on the multi-layer ceramic capacitors on the front end. Hmm. But by the way, um, this is like a high that you know this is a high frequency tap, right? So this is a relatively you know it's a pretty high frequency tap. What is that? You know, like you can go in there at the time base and measure it. But also you can get the lower frequency thumps. Now, if I actually do the bench, it's, you know, you can see it coming through, but it's reasonably well isolated from the bench, uh, presumably because it's got, you know, big, huge rubber feet on the bottom there. Some of the biggest I've seen on any scope. So that's going to dampen any vibration coming through the bench. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. We're down at, we can go down to one millivolt uh, per division if we uh, want. But yeah, it's not, you know, I, I'm not too, oh, not too concerned about coming through the bench like that, um, even though it is possible. But uh, as I said, I just saw it like tapping on the screen, and this is a big touch screen. It's designed to be touched and prodded and poked and everything else. But you know, I'm, I'm always tapping the scope. You know, go like that, and boom. You know, I, anyway, let's compare with some different scopes, shall we? Okay, let's do another Roden Schwartz. Exactly the same uh, settings, two milliseconds, uh, two millivolts per division. I'll keep the settings the same on all the scopes we uh, do here. Th this is actually, even though it's Roden Schwartz, Roden Schwartz bought out Haymeg um, like, I don't know, seven, eight years ago or so, a long time ago. And this is actually a Haymeg uh, designed and uh, produced unit, but it's Roden Schwartz. So, anyway, um, same thing. It might even have some Roden Schwartz tech, Roden Schwartz front end. By the way, that RTB2004. Uh, Roden Schwartz scope we just saw um, has its own 10 bit ADC. It's absolute killer. There's no other scope in that price range with a 10 bit ADC in there, and that's a uh, Roden Schwartz uh, designed ADC, uh, custom ADC in there. So, um, you know, this might have a Roden Schwartz ADC as well. So, let's um, have a look at this. No, it's possible too. Oh, not as, not as big as. Uh, well, there we go, got some low frequency stuff. So the Roden Schwartz really seem to be uh really seem to be susceptible, don't they? And that's not a particularly, you know, big thud, really. I mean it's just you probably wouldn't do it normally, but it's uh it just something. <laughs> Let's see, if we tap it, there we go. We can see that doing it. I don't, you know, I have to turn down to one millivolt or something to really start seeing that, but that's there's not a lot of, and the bench, you know. And, whoa, look at that. Tap in the B and C's. <laughs> That's horrible, Muriel. Okay, let's have a look at the good old uh, Keysight 3000 uh, X series. Shall we? Been around for a long time. It's a stalwart. Let's give it a, a tap on top. And it looks like it's, it's doing, it's doing it. It's got something there. Oh yeah, I've really got to hit it hard, but it's certainly, it is possible. That it's much higher frequency content than what we were getting on the uh, Roden Schwartz ones. Um, and of course, that's going to be totally dependent upon the uh, construction of the multi layer ceramic capacitors used inside these things. So, you know, it's all to do with mechanical resonant modes of the piezoelectric material and the size of the plates and, you know, every other, you know, a ton of other. Uh, it's not easy to get in here and do that. But look, um, one coupled through to channel one and two there. Two, yeah, okay, yep, it's getting through. Whoa, <laughs> oh, oh, that's a shocker, isn't it? But that's some real high frequency uh, stuff going on there, 200 microseconds per division. So much higher frequency, but you know, it's still doing the business. So I'd say the Keysight one is uh, fairly susceptible as well. The brand spanking new, not even released yet. That's not the correct number. It's going to be the 1202XE uh, Siglent. This is the only one in the wild, in the world, apparently. Oh, gee, I'm 
Uh, once again, two millivolts uh, per division. This can go down to 500 uh, microvolts. So let's actually uh, turn that down to 500 microvolts. Good having separate controls there. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Jeez, there's not much, is there? Not, well, yeah, I can see that. Really got to whack. Ah, oh, can I even whack that? I can't, I can't. Is, uh, is good from a point of view of, you know, tapping on the box. But if we, yep, we can see that coming up. Definitely, if we uh, tap that. Once again, like the key sight, very high frequency uh, stuff there being coupled for through. So, you know, it, but this one doesn't have the issue, like, you know, touching the screen, touching the top of the box, unless you directly couple through to the B and Cs, this one's rock solid. And the good old Rigol DS1054Z, once again, two millisecond, uh, two millivolts per division, two millisecond uh, time base there, and yep, wow, that's actually, wow, that's potentially, what that's got to be, is that, that is worse than the Roden Schwartz, is it? Or it's on par? Wow, I'm just gently, gently tapping the top of that. Jeez, I thought the Roden Schwartz was, oh, I mean, the, <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Wow, tap on the B and C there. There we go, once again, that's like, <laughs> just <laughs> totally saturated that. We, yep. Even tapping on the second channel is enough to trigger channel one. Wow. I am barely, I am barely touching that. Seriously? Wow. That is terrible. What a shocker. We'll try Keysight's new uh, DSOX 1100, uh, 1000X series uh, scope. And, was a little bit. Little bit going on there. Once again, two millivolts per division. I've got to whack it pretty hard to uh, do anything. It doesn't do the low frequency stuff. It's rock solid on the low frequency. Oh, maybe, yeah, if you're lucky. Jeez, but uh, let's, uh, yep, yep, there we go. We can get it, once you directly couple in, there you get it every time, don't you? Jeez, anyway. All right, the GW Instec GDS1104B. Sorry, but I, I still can't get over how sort of ugly this scope is. I'm sorry for any fans of it out there. It's, it's an okay scope, but it's, you know, anyway. <gasps> Whoa, low frequency stuff is not, it's got some low frequency stuff in there. Let's try and single. Whoa, yeah, maybe in channel four there, but geez, you really have to whack it hard. Generally, that's pretty solid. Plastic poker. Oh, you really have to go to town. You really have to get, you know, nothing. Really got to get oh, quite vicious with it before it'll do anything. Wow. Wow, that's probably the best, isn't it? Is that the best on the B and C's that we've seen? That's, that's pretty good. Compared to the others, that's not bad at all. And the Tektronix MDO 3000 series scope. Once again, two millivolts per division, two milliseconds. Got the trigger point just above uh, channel one there. Oh, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> this one looks like the best so far. Bingo, we got the uh, front panel, but it, it, it requires, a, you know, a significant little Significant little whack there, um, you know, so yeah, we've got the susceptibility in here, maybe not as good as the GW Instec, we just saw, I don't think, from memory, but yeah, as far as our actual uh, case coupling through to the front end goes, no, this one is the best so far, rock solid. And probably the equally ugly uh, Teledyne LaCroix Wavejet Touch 354. I can just switch this on because it's boot time is uh, ridiculously quick. Look at that. Um, so I've already set it up, two millivolts, all the rest of it. Oh, let's put in single mode. Jeez, we're having a hard time. Yep, not susceptible whatsoever. Something else fell down on the bench there. Let's go channel one. Oh, hello. Yep, yep, that's pretty violent. That's pretty violent. 
Yep, I'm just touching that. Is that is that the worst one, perhaps? Teledyne LaCroix? It's not... Oh, uh, yeah, you've got to couple through. You've got to trigger off that channel. That could potentially be the worst in terms of the B and C. I'm just gently touching that. I mean... Low frequency stuff, not at all. You really need that high frequency. Even a gentle tap like that. That is really... That is really quite... That's feather touch. Wow, that's the most susceptible, I suspect. And the Rigol 2000 series. Yep, it's susceptible from uh, to low frequency. And, yep, high frequency, but not... Eh, it's about average. Let's try the BNC. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Look at that. And I know you want to see old school. Let's get the HP 54616B and give it a bell. Yep, <laughs> we can do exactly the same thing. But, giving it a good whack on the chassis. Whoa! That's fine and dandy. Even on the case down here. Wow. That's the uh, shield in, metal shield in for the front end. You really have to tap the B and C to get that directly coupled to the front end uh, uh, coupling cap. So there you go. I think that's every scope I have in my lab. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, uh, I still contend that the Rodenschwartz RTB 2004 is an issue because not only, of course, does it work on the B and C input, it just goes absolutely off the scale, but it, it's actually... Sorry, yeah, it is the most sensitive. I mean, what is... What is that? I mean, that's, you know, let's go to 20 millivolts per division. And yeah, there we go. So that's just a gentle tap, let alone a, let alone a good whack like that. But not only that, but the problem is this is touch screen. I mean, I can just tap on the screen like that and cause that to come up, especially if you've got like fingernails, uh, for example, and you, you know, which I don't, but you tap it with the fingernail, it's probably going to be a bit high frequency than if you've got, you know, a bit of a stump of a digit and cause that to go in. But you don't want that when you're just playing around with your touch screen. And this is a capacitive uh, touch screen, so my um, non-capacitive uh, poker's not going to work, but, um, like, in terms of actual uh, uh, operating the screen, but look what happens. I mean, if you did have one of these, uh, you know, I think you can get capacitive pokers, can't you? I mean, that's just ridiculous. I'm just gently touching that, and look at the amplitude. Wow. That's just like, oh, I swear, like, I'm not even holding that rigidly. Just, like, like loosely going like that. Anywhere on the screen. That's just, that. that's insane. You can't have that. And they advertise that their front, you know, super low noise front end with their 10-bit ADC and custom blah, 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 and everything, fantastic, until you actually use their big functional touch screen. That's just, like, is it a feature? You could say that's a feature, right? It's a touch triggering, whack triggering, trademark. Hmm. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Catch you next time.